Hey you, what up? Welcome to my channel. Welcome back. It's Faves X Fails Time for the month of January 2022. The last time I conducted a Faves X Fails was back in December of last year for the month of November. And here we are. I have gathered so, so many, many products, products, so many products that I love that I have slapped onto my face to create this very euphoria-esque look that I hope you love. And also, of course, I'm going to be talking about the products that did not work for me, the fails and tell you all about them, why you should not waste your time and your money on them. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you are new to my channel, hit that notification bell. It's important so you can be notified of my videos. And now let's get into it. Faves X Fails, meticulous notes as always in Peruge. Here we come. All right, let's begin. So the first product that is on my fails list this time around is a product that a lot of people were comparing to a higher end dupe, supposedly. The dupe being the Charlotte T Hollywood Flawless Filter. This product that is in my fails category is by no means a dupe to this. I know, I'm shocked myself. I am talking about the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Perfector 4-in-1 Glow Makeup. So now this is supposed to be a 4-in-1 product, basically a primer, a concealer, a highlighter, and a BB cream in one. It comes with one of those spongy applicators that I don't find to be particularly useful. I feel like it gets contaminated very easily. I just don't see it as a very practical type of applicator, first and foremost. But moving past that, I actually really did not like this product. This, in comparison to this, was super sheer. And sheer is actually like a positive way to describe it. This was transparent in the worst sense of the word. It had a very metallic, not luminous finish. So it gave you like a tin man type of vibe, not glowy and radiant like the flawless filter. Furthermore, the consistency of this product was just really thin. So it's not something that is creamy, that has pigment, that feels radiant and comfortable on the skin. This felt like a really, I'm just gonna say it like how I feel it. This is a Walmart version of this. And I know this is a saying that a lot of people have been saying lately, Gen Z's, I got this one from you. Not to criticize Walmart or anything. I shop at Walmart, totally fine. But this just did not hit the spot. This was so not flattering on the skin, especially on someone with my type of skin who has imperfections, who has open pores, who is very oily. This did not look good on me. It actually looked kind of decent on camera, but in person, let's just say I did not receive any compliments from the swatch model. So fails list. This in no way compares to this. I'm gonna show you a close up of the two finishes and then you can be the judge. See how the bottom is a lot more thin, whereas the top just looks thicker and just a lot more luscious in my opinion. And it sits the same on the skin. This month I have a lot of products in the face base category, in the tinted moisturizers, the foundations, the powders, those types of products, and not as many in either category in the color cosmetics, meaning palettes, lip colors, highlighters, things like that. So I guess the majority of this video will be focusing on the skin component just because there were a lot more new products coming out. So I have a lot more to say in that department. All right, so the first product that I actually found myself liking, to the shock of many, is Jaclyn Cosmetics Skin Perfecting Blurring Tint. So now this is from their recent collection. This is supposed to be a very light coverage but buildable type of blurring skin tint. The main function of this skin tint is to blur imperfections and I think it actually did this rather well. So a lot of people were comparing this to a primer, but to me, if you don't have, let's say, a lot of discoloration to cover up, this would work really well as just an overall skin tint. I liked it and I found that it worked really well with Jaclyn's powders from the same line. So now this is a $34 product. There aren't too many shades, I believe like maybe 11 or 12, but they are sheer enough. They are flexible enough to fit a variety of skin tones. I enjoyed this one. I can't say that it worked as well with other powders, say the Charlotte T powder, but it did work very well with Jaclyn Cosmetics powders. So that's that. Moving on to another skin tint slash skincare 
fusion product that I like this month was the Beautiful Skin Foundation by Charlotte T. This was kind of a unique experience for me because even though I am oily skin and this is not necessarily meant for oily skin, this worked rather well on me and I think I know why. So I tried this product for the first time at home on camera, it wore pretty well. I did a wear test, I showed what my skin looked like at the end of the day. I was pleased with it, but I wasn't pleased enough to rave about it in the sense that I would 100% agree with their claims. Their claims were super outlandish, like it made your skin 200% smoother, like it made your skin 180% clear, and all these crazy claims. So to me, it was a little bit outlandish, it was a little bit out there, and I needed more time to test it out. But I I will say this, when I went to DC for a weekend, this is one of the products that I took with me and I wanted to test it out. DC is much drier climate than New York and this, I feel, almost saved my skin. It wore so beautifully, it looked so great at the end of the day that I almost believe the hype. But then again, I feel like it's not really meant for oily skin and I'm not really certain if this is something that I could reach for, say, in the summertime in New York City. So I'm gonna have to give it a couple more tries and obviously I'm gonna have to test it out for longer than just a couple of weeks, perhaps a month or two, to really be able to tell if those skincare claims are actually true. But so far, I gotta say, I like it. But now from this uh, makeup skincare hybrid category, the product that I would say is the most stable, and it's the one that I like the most this month, it's the new NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. This also is a skincare hybrid. It has, I think, 70% skincare ingredients, so it's good for your skin. It's also very flexible, not just for dry and normal skin types, but also for my oily skin type, as well as sensitive skin types. So I feel like this one is just a little bit more universal. It's a little bit easier to use. It works with multiple primers and powders. I also tested this one out in DC. This is the product that I wore at night. This was the product that I wore during the day and it held up and it looked beautiful. It looked great on camera. It looked great on pictures. So I guess what I'm saying is I'm a fan of this one. So this is the one that I'm going to be applying to my face today because just because I'm talking a lot doesn't mean that I'm not actually going to apply these products to my face. Gonna prime my skin with my YSL just because it's here. Oh, one more thing I do wanna mention about this product is that my usual shade Stromboli, which is my shade in most NARS foundation, was a pinch too yellow, much more yellow actually than the Stromboli in the other NARS foundations, but a pinch too yellow on me. So I actually am using a new shade, which is Vanuatu M3.5. I feel like this one is just a little bit more neutral, not as yellow as this Stromboli, though I will say this one's a little bit darker. So do keep that in mind. If you're typically a Stromboli in NARS foundations, this one is not an exact match. And I like yellow foundations, but this one I found to be just a little too yellow. So now I don't know if this is a perfect match for me, but it's definitely better than the other one, which is why I've decided to stick to this one. All right, foundation is on. The coverage is sheer to medium. It's definitely buildable. Same with the Charlotte T, definitely more on the medium side. It is thicker compared to the NARS, whereas this is just a little bit more liquidy, but both can cover up minor imperfections or even medium-sized imperfections, like in my case. Both seem to perfect the skin finish, both seem to blur out the pores, smooth out your texture, so that's kind of what I'm here for when I'm looking for a foundation. All right, are we ready for some fails in the foundation category? Yeah, I have some fails in the foundation category as well. I told you this was gonna be a very skin base heavy Faves X Fails. I am sadly not loving the new Smashbox Halo Healthy Glow All-in-One Tinted Moisturizer with SPF 25. This product, just wasn't as good as the rest of everything else that I've tried. It was okay at best, didn't really wear too well. I needed a lot of helpers in order to make it work, in order to make it look smooth. Ended up looking kind of patchy at the end of the day. And moreover, the thing that really solidified my opinion on this product 
is that Lee told me that my skin looks better without it. That is a major red flag. That is a major thing for me because I am someone who doesn't have flawless skin. So when my significant other tells me that my skin looks better without a product that's supposed to make it look better, I mean, it solves the case for me. So basically, this is not a perfecting type of product for my type of skin. I thought it was okay and Lee thought it was not. So therefore, I'll never reach for it again. Similarly, I didn't love the illuminating moisturizer from the same collection, the Smashbox Halo Plumping Dew with hyaluronic acid. I was kind of surprised about that because hyaluronic acid and oily skin get along very well. I love hyaluronic acid products. They usually plump my skin and they wear very well. They're able to control my oils. They work similarly for dry skin. They help dry skin maintain its moisture. But in this case, this just didn't do anything. In fact, it was very luminous for a moisturizer. I didn't understand why there was like pearly particles that again, made me look like a tin man. This is not something that I would use on my pores, even though it has niacinamide that's supposed to minimize your pores. Basically, I I didn't get this one. It didn't work for me. I'm gonna have to say goodbye to these, sadly. Also, I will mention that I have not found a skin product from Smashbox that has worked for me yet. Their undertones I find are really extreme. They're not very skin-like. They are either too orange or too yellow or too pink or just too extreme to actually look like skin. I find myself having trouble just even finding my own shade within Smashbox foundation ranges. So that's just my experience. I don't know if your experience has been different, but so far me and Smashbox foundation products, skin products. We've not been friendly. All right, moving along to some positives. I did just try out a concealer that I immediately fell in love with because it wore so well, because it was crease free. It was kind of um, a very natural looking concealer that looked very good on me, but it also lasted very long and it just sounds promising. I'm talking about the Elizabeth Arden Flawless Finish Skin Caring Concealer. Now, I actually really love the Skin Caring Foundation from Elizabeth Arden, so I'm not surprised that I love the concealer. The shade that I'm using here is 305, which is, I believe, a medium, but this is a neutral kind of pinky undertone, and I specifically like it for my under eye. This was kind of like a love at first sight type of product. I literally just tested it out for the first time in my previous video, but I've used it a couple of times since then and it's quickly become a new fave. Now this isn't something that I would necessarily use to spot conceal or like cover up blemishes, but I think it's something that's great for brightening, for covering up dark circles. And I also think it has this very light but effective luminosity, like light reflecting properties that help to trick the eye of the person who's looking at you into thinking that you're more flawless than you are basically. Also, this is a concealer that gives you enough time to blend it out, to play with it, to layer it if you need to. It's buildable, it's flexible, it's easy on the skin, and it has skin-loving ingredients. Also, it can sit on your skin for a good amount of time before seeping into your fine little crevices here. And because of that, I'm actually not going to set it right away. I do wanna talk about a fail concealer for this month, and then I wanna go into some cream products. So, the concealer that I am not loving this month, and it is absolutely in my fails category, and I think it might be in the fails category of like most YouTuber reviewers, just from like what I I've seen and what I've heard. I am sadly talking about the new Jaclyn Cosmetics Faux Filler, yeah, Filler Perfecting Concealer. This product was super weird. I really wanted to love it because I really did enjoy the blurring skin tint from the same collection. But the shocking thing about this collection was that these products absolutely do not go together well. In fact, they are so different and they are so impossible to wear together that this concealer almost ends up ruining the function of the skin tint. It is that drastically different and it is that weird to me. So basically, this has a very thick consistency. It is a creamy concealer, supposed to be very pigmented, and it is very pigmented, but it sets so quickly, it doesn't give you any time to blend it out, and it sets almost crust-like, almost like you could see it on your skin. If it's not your tone, if it's too light, you will literally end up with like 
white lines under your eyes. If it's too dark for you, if it's not exactly your skin tone, you'll end up with like yellow lines underneath. So that's exactly what happened to me. It was really hard to use this for spots. I would absolutely never use this for spots because it also oxidizes and then it ends up looking darker in certain areas. But this was just really, really hard to work with. I tried blending it out with a brush on camera in my review. Later, I tried blending it out with a sponge and it was still just very, very, very difficult to work with. I honestly don't know who this would work for. I would love to see like a tutorial just to make sure that I'm not missing something. But as many times as I've tried it, and especially having tried it with this blurring skin tint, these are just not compatible. These just do not go together. And moreover, this was just not great. Moving right along to some cream products that I want to talk to you guys about. All right, first of all, I have a new favorite bronzer stick in the cream format. I'm talking about the Rare Beauty bronzer stick <laughs> in the shade Happy Sol, Happy Sun. This I thought was so lovely, just so easy to use. It had a beautiful slip, blended out great. And I'm not even like a cream bronzer type of gal, but this made me want to be a cream bronzer type of gal, you know? It was just so nice. It had a beautiful slip, just something that's so easy to work with, so easy to blend out, quick, effortless, does the job. You can't go wrong with that in my book. You know how certain bronzer sticks, if you leave them on your face for too long, they end up staining your skin. So even after you blend out the product, you kind of see like the outline of where you first applied the product. And I find that that happens more often than you'd think. With this product, that's not a concern whatsoever. It's just so creamy and so easy and just so lovely. Look at that, boom. Contouring the nose is usually not my forte, but with this product, kind of been finding myself contouring my nose lately just cause it's fun, you know? Love this one, I believe this is $22. There's like five or six shades. Kinda wanna get my hands on more shades than just this one, just so I can have options for the summertime. I'm definitely a fan. Speaking of rare beauty, oh. see this is why I almost always set my skin right away because if it's wet, like the way that it is right now, cat hairs just stick to it and I don't even know where it's sticking to. I just know I feel some of that cat hair on my skin. <sighs> but anyway, speaking of rare beauty, I am loving the new addition to the blushes. These were always good, these are still good, now there's new shades. But what I really wanted to mention was the Genius blush that comes with it. It doesn't actually come with it, it is sold separately, but the blush brush is so, so genius and it is so easy to use for this type of product. It blends it out so well without disrupting your makeup underneath that I, I don't think I can recommend it enough. Like everyone who is into the Rare Beauty blushes must have the Rare Beauty blush brush. This is just genius. Genius design, perfect for these like highly, highly pigmented liquid blushes. I actually did not know how to blend them out before this brush, but now that I have this brush, I have like a newfound love for the actual blush. Because before I always thought it was just a little too pigmented for me. Like it made my cheeks look so giant if I applied more than a dot, you know? But this brush just buffs it out so beautifully and it places it just right. Now, I honestly think I'm gonna get myself a couple of these brushes. Okay, we talked about a lot of favorites. Should we talk about some failed blushes? I think we should. Sad to say, this cute AF heart-shaped blush from ColourPop was just a no-go for me. Oh my God, and I wanted to love it because I love cute packaging, I love heart-shaped things. I feel like it's just in time for Valentine's Day and you know, I'm a hopeless romantic, so I really wanted to keep these. Unfortunately, the formula was so bad, you guys. It was just so thin, so chalky. It applied kind of patchy, it like clung to certain areas of the face, but it didn't actually provide a blush sort of look. This was difficult to use. Unfortunately, it's really only good to look at in the packaging. I'm not gonna be keeping these, sadly. I tried other colors and the formula was just very blah. It just wasn't there. Sad to say. Moving on 
two powders. Another thing that I'm loving from Rare Beauty is their new powder. This is their setting powder in the shade light. It has a very nice scroll wheel. I'm a sucker for the scroll wheels because then you can easily travel with them and there's no mess. And what I was surprised about this powder is that even though the finish is somewhat luminous, the powder itself is very weightless and it's sheer, it's translucent enough that once again, the light reflecting properties do a really great job of tricking the eye. So they bounce the light as opposed to making you look like a tin man. So this is something that I think works really well, not just in the under eye, also in the pores zones. Yeah, I was shocked as well. Like how could something with luminosity actually work on the pores zones? And I'll tell you how. It's because it's reflective, but not metallic. So I like this one a lot. I thought it was great. And I gotta say, this collection from Rare Beauty actually made me like Rare Beauty more. I feel like I finally understood the brand identity. It resonates with me, and I think it resonates with a lot of people. I truly think that Rare Beauty is here to stay. Okay, so do you see how that just like mattified the skin? But it's not looking super matte. It still looks kind of radiant. And radiant is a word that brands like to throw around a lot. Like what does radiant actually mean? Does it mean healthy? Does it mean glowing? Does it mean luminous? Or is it like a step below luminous? I'm still having a hard time distinguishing what all these adjectives, what these like made up descriptions actually mean. But in my mind, when I'm looking at myself in the mirror and also in my monitor, I'm seeing that my skin looks mattified. It doesn't look oily, but it doesn't look like I have a ton of makeup on that actually looks and feels like makeup. So I guess that's what radiant means to me. Like natural, but better than natural. Snatural. All right, speaking of powders, I'm gonna go down the list because I have quite a few favorites this month. And funny enough, they are all sort of in the luminous radiant category. This next powder that I have been loving is meant to go with this NARS foundation, the light reflecting foundation. And it is actually the light reflecting press setting powder in the shade crystal. So now this looks white to the naked eye, but you can see kind of like reflective properties when you look at it up close. I will say this at first scared me a lot because I thought it was going to be a lot more luminous than what it was, but this powder is super duper fine and super skin perfecting. So to me, it's ideal to go with the NARS light reflecting foundation and it is really good to highlight certain areas of interest. Like you could definitely use this under the eye or like on your nose bridge. But what I like to use it for is to sort of reverse contour, AKA highlight underneath the contour. So because I am someone who doesn't really contour on the regular, but I did today, this is what I do when I contour. Basically I go all the way and I contour and I also reverse highlight. And then I kind of just blend in the edges. So what I'm liking about my face base so far is how everything is coming together in a very almost professional way, but it looks so effortless and it looks so good up close. Everything looks very seamless, like it's meant to go together, like everything is working to seal in my makeup, to perfect my skin texture, to sort of close up the pores, you know, to smooth out any like minor bumps that I may have from acne. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, this is why I like to apply my faves as I'm doing my faves X fails. I wanna show you why I like these products, why they work for me, and why I'm raving about them, as opposed to just telling you. The final favorite product on this list, and it's actually like my final product on this page, is also from NARS, and it is the Light Reflecting Setting Powder in the loose format in the shade Sure. Now this also has a nice top to it. It has one of those rubbery nets, so you have to be careful with how much product you pick up. And this shade is actually meant for medium to tan skin tones. So what I'm gonna do is just pick up a little bit and I'm going to basically blend that over my entire face. Now this is not something that I would do on the regular. I wouldn't actually use like three different powders. I would use maybe two or perhaps even just one. But today I wanna show you everything. This to me is like the ideal finishing powder to melt everything in, to bring it all together and to just make everything cohesive. This one is not as luminous as the crystal powder, the pressed powder, but it does still have some uh, 
radiance and it does have just a pinch of color but i don't know to me i like it because i see a difference with it and it just brings everything together this one is great to just uh set and bring light to certain areas this one is great to blend and melt everything in i guess that's the difference between those two and this one i would say is like a hybrid of the two it kind of melts but it also kind of light reflects you know it's like the best description i can give you anyway moving right along to eyeshadow palettes i don't have too many eyeshadow palettes this month to talk about. As a matter of fact, I think I only tried two and it was in my previous video. I'm talking about the Charlotte T Instant Eye Palette, Smoky Eyes Are Forever, this 12 pan palette here, and also the Too Faced Too Femme Spring Collection Palette. That I'll be honest, I was more excited about this color combo than I was about this one, which, you know, we've seen before. It's a neutral palette with some reflective shades that are very wearable for every day or night. But this definitely has a spring theme. This definitely has like a Valentine's Day theme. It's like a little bit more festive and flirty and I was into it. Unfortunately, as much as I want to love Too Faced eyeshadows, sadly, they're just not up there. They are just not up there compared to some of the other brands. I'm sad to say it this way, but this is something that has happened to me repeatedly for years, I will say. I love Too Faced packaging. I love their color stories, but the formulas of their eyeshadows are just not great. They are just too dry. They are too chalky. They are too transparent, not sheer. There's a difference between sheer and transparent. Also, I just found them to be really difficult to work with, really difficult to blend out. And I only tried a couple of shades i will be honest so maybe some of the metallics are different but really the shades that i tried were very neutral shades and so if those don't work then why would i even keep a palette like this sad to say but it's true this palette on the other hand is very good it is beautiful it is very natural perhaps some would even call it a little bit boring but the quality is really good so that kind of seals the deal doesn't it all right, so today I am going to slap it on. I'm gonna use my Fenty Beauty Primer, just like that. And then I'm gonna do something different. I usually always reach for matte shades, but today I wanna go for something really flirty, really pinky and girly. And there are a couple of shades here that are very pinky, like this one from the Love Eyes section and this one from the Confident Eyes section. So those are the two that I'm gonna go for, cause you know, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. And I love all that lovey-dovey shit, cause you know, I've been in a relationship for 21 years, so I gotta love it. All right, picking up that pink and painting it onto my lid. Very dainty, very beautiful. Boom. Next, I'm gonna grab the other pink shade. This one's more of like a cooler pink. I'm gonna layer that right on top and add that mainly to the outer portion, but still kind of heavily all over my lid like that. Yes, I'm going for a full on luminous shadow look because I definitely noticed a shift. I always said you don't necessarily need to wear a matte eyeshadow in the crease like you've been told for the past 10 years or for as long as like beauty gurus have been around. And finally, I am seeing more luminous looks all over the lid without necessarily the use of matte shadows. And that inspires me. And sure, you could still create dimension because look, when I turn to the side, there's clearly a shadow on my lids. Inner corner, I am gonna go for the super pale shade. And this one is a lot more sparkly, I think, than the other two, which are just more metallic. I'm gonna add that to the inner corner with my Wayne Gloss brush, just like that. I'm gonna close this palette out for now. I'm gonna move on to this new Catrice liner that I just tried and I really like. It is their Glam and Doll Easy Wash Off Power Hold Eyeliner and it is the Dippy type, which to me is my favorite. I find it to be the easiest to use. And so today I'm gonna use it. I am going to draw a wing directly from the top lash line, kind of like that. Drawing a thin line across my lid and then thickening that in the outer portion. You've seen me do this a hundred times. And then like that on the other eye. I don't know, for me, dippy liners are a lot more fun to work with. And perhaps it's because for my skill level of cat eye, I really like being able to have maximum control of my liner. And I think with the dippy liner, you have maximum control. Perhaps that's not the best for a newbie. Maybe you need something simpler like a marker type, which actually will do the lining for you. But for me, for more complicated liner looks, which is the one that I'm going for today, I like to control it. All right, so now that I've lined the top lash line, I am going to reach back for the same liner and I am going to create a double wing. That's right. I've been watching a lot of Euphoria lately, so here's my homage. I'm gonna start very thinly, lining just the outer portion of my lid, lower lid and lower lash line. Not keeping super precise, but 
keeping very, very thin, and then kind of just winging that out like that and like that. Next thing I'm gonna do is grab a small brush, like a flat top, narrow brush. I'm gonna reach back into a matte shadow this time. I think I'm gonna go for this taupe one. And what I'm gonna do is actually darken right underneath this line, just so the inner portion of the line can blend in better into my lower lash line while keeping the second wing very, very sharp. So essentially I'm just adding color and I'm kind of smudging it down. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm gonna reach back for more liner and just perfect it if it needs perfecting. Maybe add some dots here in the lower lash line, just like that. Then I'm just gonna elongate the top lash line a pinch and also kind of straighten it so that they both are pointing in the same direction. And now the same thing on the other eye. All right, I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna take my small brush once again. This is the one that I used for the lid. I'm going to reach into the sparkly eyeshadow here, dipping just the tip, and I'm gonna apply this shade right in between my wings like that. Oh yeah, using whatever's remaining on the brush just to highlight the brow arch. Oh yeah, if you have any eyeshadow on your liner, you can just easily go over that with the liner and fix any of that, boom. I'm gonna whisk away any fallout. I'm gonna say I'm feeling myself. I'm gonna curl my lashes with this Refer Lash Curler that I like almost as much as my Laura Mercier, though not as much, but I like it enough to keep it in my filming room, so that's what I've been doing ever since I discovered it. Also the bottom lashes. I've tried a few different mascaras this time. Haven't really had any standouts outside of the Heroin Make Long and Curl Super Waterproof Mascara. This one has a really, really tiny wand, which is great for my short lashes. Also, this is a fiber mascara, but it is waterproof. So that's a pretty unique feature. And it's a mascara that I've been liking a lot lately. So that's what I'm gonna use today. Definitely a fave for me out of everything that I've tried so far. I can't say that I I have a failed mascara because I feel like mascaras are very individual. This has just been the one that I've been liking lately. So it is a fave for me once again. Ooh, feeling it. Another product that I found myself loving a lot were these new Ardell Eco Lashes. In my previous video, I tried out a very dramatic style, but for today, I just wanna use like one of these natural looking styles, either 454 or 453, and just enhance my lashes without covering up any of the liner. What I like about these is that they feel feather light. You absolutely do not feel them on your lids. Also, they're very eco-friendly. <laughs> No, this one did not just fall apart. Okay, so maybe I only like the dramatic style because the natural styles are just too light to be able to handle me pulling off the glue from the band. So I just ruined one of these lashes. Okay, I guess I can't call this a fave any longer. I'm gonna have to throw those out. All right, let's try the other style, but I'm very conflicted now. Maybe that organic cotton band isn't such a great idea after all. All right, very carefully, I'm going to pull from the outer corner. Okay, this one doesn't have any glue, so that's a good thing. Yeah, these are so light that you have to be extra careful with how you pull them off the tray. But this is only true for the very natural lash styles. This was not the case for the dramatic one that I tried last time. I'm gonna use the Duo Brush On Adhesive with Vitamins. This is also from the same Eco collection. And I am going to very carefully brush this on, set it aside. Then I'm gonna attempt to glue this. These lashes are so natural and so short. They're almost the size of my natural lashes, but they enhance my natural lashes so beautifully that I gotta give it some props. Definitely difficult to use, but once you're able to, they are very enhancing. I have just two more categories that I wanna quickly go through. Number one is the highlighter category, and this month I am loving Pixie X Hello Kitty Blush Highlighters. These are actually called Glowy Powder Blushes, and it's not the first time that Pixie creates this formula. It's actually one of my favorite formulas for these these very glowy blush slash highlighter type of hybrids. But this one I really love because the shades are really flattering. They're not as luminous as a highlighter and they're not as pigmented as a blush. There's something in between and to me it's a really nice thing. So I am going to use this shade here which is called Friendly Blush right on top of my Rare Beauty Blush just to give the back of my cheekbone a little bit of radiance. What's great about this product is that it does not settle into fine lines the way that most highlighters do. In fact, I find it very skin perfecting and skin enhancing. So beautiful. In the lip category, I am 
actually already wearing the Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude lip liner on my lips, but I have one more favorite that I have been reaching for a lot. I am talking about the NARS Afterglow Lip Shine gloss, which although is said to be a gloss, to me it feels a little bit more comfortable on the lips, so not as sticky as a gloss, more like an oil, but not as oily as an oil. This is another hybrid product, kind of between a gloss and an oil, but it's a formulation that I really like and I think a lot of people will like. So I'm going to reach for a new color, something that I haven't tried before. Going for something perhaps nudie. Ooh, how about this one? Chelsea Girls. Let's do this. I'm just going to reestablish my lip line with the Iconic Nude. So beautiful. Just a sheer hint of color, nothing too pigmented, but feels perfectly balmy and comfortable on the lips without being too much, without overdoing it, without being too glossy or too glassy or too thick. It's just perfect. All right, so that is my look for today's faves x fails using all of my faves but not my fails because this is how we do it overall i gotta say this is probably my favorite look from my most recent videos i just like how everything is flowing together very well it almost feels like this is a look that i had planned before filming but it's not because i actually don't go into these videos especially the faves x fails and testing new makeup with a particular look in mind i really just want to let the product speak to me and I really want them to kind of speak for themselves and to really show you their capabilities. So this is exactly what I did today using all of my favorite products from the month and also from the last month of December. This is what's been working for me. This is what I've been reaching for. I hope this type of video saves you time and most importantly saves you money so that you don't buy these things before I try them, before I test them out for you. So with that said, you guys, I am going to wrap this video. I hope you like the look that I came up with. I personally think it's a fave for me and I will see you in the next one. Peace. And check out my most recent videos right here. Click on them. Mwah.